the ghost engine special special it was Halloween on the island of Sodor and Thomas and Paxton were double heading a stone train to the wharf the wharf was one of the few places where the standard and narrow gauge engines could work together Paxton had never gone to the wharf before he was excited to see what it was like there, and so were the stone trucks, who were recent additions to the island. When Thomas and Paxton arrived at the wharf, James, Colin, Match, and the narrow gauge engines were hard at work. Colin waited patiently for Mighty Mac to bring their trucks over for Colin to load James's crates into. But Bruno, the new autistic brake van, was quick to notice a problem. Um, Colin, he said, how are you going to load three crates into just two trucks? Uh-oh, said Colin. Mighty Mac, you're one truck short. Really, said Mighty, I thought Mac had two trucks behind him. I thought you had two trucks in front of you, said Mac. Never mind, said Peter Sam. I'll go fetch one as quick as I can. And Peter Sam hurried away. Peter Sam raced around the bend and sped past Duncan, who was sleeping in a siding. Ugh, said Duncan. Could you keep it down? I'm trying to take a nap. Thomas and Paxton chuckled. Now is not very the best time to try to be taking a nap, said Thomas. It's pretty busy right now, and you should be doing some work yourself. Well, said Duncan, I'll have you know that Colin is going to be telling a Halloween story tonight, and I want to be able to stay awake for that, so I best take a nap now while I can. Ooh, Colin's going to tell a story, said Thomas. This will be interesting. We may have to stick around tonight, Paxton. Thomas and Paxton pushed the autistic stone trucks into the siding. And then they left the wall to do some more work. When the day's work was done, Thomas and Paxton were allowed to go to the wharf to listen to Colin's story. They rolled in where James, Madge, and several of the narrowgate gingers were waiting to hear it. Bruno and the autistic stone trucks were also there as well. They waited in anticipation as Colin began to tell the story. Now then, said Colin, this story, like most stories, happened a long time ago. There was a narrow gauge railway with about seven engines working on it. Or would it be eight engines or seven and a half? What are you talking about, Colin, said Reneus. What I mean, said Colin, is that there were two tenor engines, four tank engines, a couple of the names I can remember were Andy, Proteus, and Smudger. Wait, 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 said Duke. Excuse me, said Colin. Uh, yeah, said Duke. Smudger? That's impossible. Smudger only worked on the Mid-Soda Railway and he was turned into a generator. There's no way he could be working on that railway. But Colin ignored Duke and continued talking. Besides the two tenor engines, the three tank engines I named and the fourth tank engine, there was also a double ferry locomotive on the railway, just like Mighty Mac. Ah, said Fearless Freddy, 
So that's why you were saying seven or eight or seven and a half. That makes sense. Anyway, said Colin, one end of the double ferry locomotive was named Little, and the other end's name was Giant. So together, their name was Little Giant. The little half wasn't very confident and often a bit worried. The giant half of the locomotive, he was pretty confident, a little overconfident in fact, and he was often a little mischievous too. One year on Halloween, the controller of the railway came to see his engines. He told them that there was a special special that needed to be taken to the top station that night for the Halloween party. Normally, the engines would try to see who could get their work done first in order to be chosen for the job. But this year, the controller straight up picked one of his engines. He chose Proteus. The other engines were happy for Proteus. He didn't get to pull many important trains. In fact, he hadn't pulled an important train at all in his life on that railway. Giant, however, was very upset. He had wanted to be the one to pull the train with Little. As the controller began to walk away, one of the tender engines began backing up. But Giant was too cross to pay attention. He started moving as the tenor engine reversed onto the points, and he knocked the engine's tenor off the track. Whoops, said Giant half-heartedly. The engine was very cross. Giant, you big clumsy oaf, he said. You damaged my tender. The controller quickly turned around and walked back to inspect the damage. This won't do at all, he said. This engine had some trucks to take to the top station later this evening. I guess those trucks will have to be added to the special special train. Because of this, the train will probably be a little heavier for Proteus. I'll have to try to select another engine to help him pull the train. Hmm, maybe Smudge or Andy could be the perfect choice for the job. Giant was still cross as he puffed away, dragging Little behind him. Later that day, Little Giant was taking some stone trucks down the line. They trudged up a very steep slope, and soon they began to cross the old iron bridge. But then there was trouble. As they reached the other side, Little began to apply his brakes slowly so they wouldn't go down too fast. But Giant was still fussing too much to pay attention. The train began to speed down the hill too fast. Little had to brake even harder and the train came to a sudden stop. The train stopped so suddenly that some rocks from the last car fell out and landed on the track. Did you hear something? said Little. He hadn't seen the rocks fall out, but since Giant was facing the other way, he had indeed noticed, but he said nothing. With no response, Little decided there wasn't anything to worry about, so they continued on slowly. Giant, however, knew what the next train going across the bridge was going to be. and he was going to use the spilled rocks to his advantage. That evening, Proteus was making his way home to collect the special special. He was approaching the old iron bridge. It was starting to get dark and there was mist everywhere. Even with his lamp on, Proteus was having a hard time seeing where he was going. I shouldn't worry, said Proteus. The rails will safely guide me to where I need to go. But with the mist surrounding the track, Proteus couldn't see the spilled rocks on the line. Suddenly he hit them and his wheels came off the track, 
Whoa, oh no, he cried, but it was too late. Proteus plunged over the side and into the swamps below. Back at the yard, the other engines were waiting when Little Giant came in with their stone trucks. Little Giant had just uncoupled from the train. Suddenly, Andy came racing into the yard much too quickly. One of the stone trucks was on the point, and he hit it and sent the stone trucks off the track and right in front of Smudger. Oh dear, said Andy. I didn't mean to do that. Oh bother, said the controller. Two accidents in one day? Huh. <laughs> this is pretty unacceptable. Sorry, sir, said Andy, but that's not all the accidents for the day. What do you mean, said the controller? Well, I was working near the old iron bridge just a little earlier, and I heard this loud splash. I'm worried it might have been Proteus. It sounded large enough like an engine fell into the swamps below. Oh dear, said the controller. And it was indeed true. Some workmen came a short while later and confirmed that they had saw Proteus fall off the bridge. Oh no, said the controller. This this is this is terrible. Indeed, said Smudger. What are we gonna do? What about the special special? The controller looked at the derailed trucks. Smudger and pretty much most of the other engines couldn't get out. One of the tenor engines was still having its tenor repaired, and Andy wasn't strong enough to pull the train on his own, and he was going to have to go get the breakdown crane to clean up the stone trucks. Well, said the controller, I guess that leaves you, little giant. You should be strong enough to pull the long train. An evil grin appeared on Giant's face, but no one noticed it. Of course, sir, said Giant. We'll get that train delivered as quick as we can. And he pushed Little down the line. Little Giant quickly collected the train, and they set off down the line towards the top station. Giant was so pleased with himself that as they came through the valley, he blew his whistle loudly. It triggered some loose rocks, and they fell down on top of him. Ow, he said, that hurt. Shortly after they passed through the valley, they came to the slope for the old iron bridge. The train was heavy since there were extra trucks added to it, and the giant was beginning to feel weak. The rocks that had hit him had damaged his boiler, and he was leaking steam and water. The train was nearly at the top, but Giant ran out of strength. Little couldn't pull the train by himself, and the train slid back down. Oh, this is just awful, said Little. We're going to be stuck here and miss the Halloween party, and these supplies and other important things won't get to the party. Giant felt more miserable than ever. Several minutes passed. Soon, a whole hour had passed and no help had come. Giant was just about to fall asleep when he heard a strange sound. The sound sounded like something splashing about in the swamp water below the bridge. But Giant couldn't see very well. It was still pretty misty. Then, Something unimaginable happened. Giant looked down at his coupling, and suddenly he saw it being lifted into the air, and suddenly it was dangling in midair like it was connected to something invisible. What in the name of what? he said, but he said it so quietly that Little couldn't hear him. Suddenly, the train began to move forward. Little couldn't see what was at the front, but he figured an engine had come to help, so he began pulling the train as well. And slowly but surely, the train began to work its way up the old iron bridge. It was a slow and difficult process, but the train soon made it across the bridge and down the slope towards the top station. 
No one said a word the entire journey. But at last, Little Giant and the Special Special reached the top station. The workmen cheered when the train pulled in. They went to unload the trucks. So no one except Giant noticed Giant's coupling being placed back on his front coupling hook. Giant was still speechless. Then, as he looked into the distance, he thought he saw something. A few moments later, the controller arrived. Well, he said, this is quite a pleasant surprise. I heard that Giant's boiler got damaged and he couldn't help hold the train up the old iron bridge. But Little, it seems you've got twice the amount of strength than you and Giant combined. Well done. Little was confused, but he decided to just go with it. Thank you, sir, he said. As for you, Giant, you're gonna have to go to the works, and therefore Little's gonna have to be taken out of service too. I hope you're pleased with yourself, cause there's gonna be quite a bit of change in the schedule since a couple engines are out of commission now. Giant said nothing, but he just looked down at his bubbers and coupling hook. And that's the story, said Colin. Wow, said the engines. They were amazed at how great the story had been. They were a little spooked too, but they didn't want to admit it. That was the best Halloween story I've ever heard, said Bruno. Then again, that was actually the first Halloween story I've ever heard. But still, it was a pretty good one. Why, thank you, Bruno, said Colin. What did you guys think of it? Did you like it? Oh yes, said the engines. It was very interesting. Yeah, I agree, said Duke. Though I still find it hard to believe that Smudger was on that railway. The engines and the rolling stock couldn't help but laugh. And one by one, they all fell asleep. <laughs>